The brooch that fastened Sir Brendan Tolly's cloak was a black fish, wrought in jet and gold. His ringmail was grim and grey. Over it he wore greaves, a gorget, gauntlets, pauldron, and paulines of blackened steel, none half so dark as the look upon his face as he waited for Jamie Lannister at the end of the drawbridge. Alone atop a chestnut courser, caparisoned in red and blue. He loves me not. Tully had a craggy face, deeply lined and windburnt, beneath a shock of stiff grey hair. But Jamie could still see the great knight who had once enthralled a squire with tales of the Ninepenny Kings. Honor's hoofs clattered against the planks of the drawbridge. Jamie had thought long and hard about whether to wear his gold armor or his white to this meeting. In the end, he'd chosen a leather jack and a crimson cloak. He drew up a yard from Sir Brynden and inclined his head to the older man. King Slear, said Tolly, that he would make that name the first word from his mouth spoke volumes, but Jamie was resolved to keep his temper. Blackfish, he responded, thank you for coming. I assume you have returned to fulfill the oaths you swore, my niece, Sir Brendan said. As I recall, you promised Caitlin her daughters in return for your freedom. His mouth tightened. Yet I do not see the girls. Where are they? Must he make me say it? I do not have them. Oh, pity. Do you wish to resume your captivity? Your old cell is still available. We have put fresh rushes on the floor. Uh, and a nice new pail for me to shit in, I don't doubt. That was thoughtful of you, sir, but I fear I must decline. I prefer the comforts of my pavilion. Whilst Caitling enjoys the comforts of her grave. I had no hand in Lady Caitlin's death, you might have said. And her daughters were gone before I reached King's Landing. It was on his tongue to speak of Brian and the sword he'd given her. But the blackfish was looking at him the way that Eddard Stark had looked at him when he found him on the Iron Throne with a mad king's blood upon his blade. I came to speak of the living, not the dead, of those who need not die, but shall, unless I hand you river run. Is this where you threaten to hang Ed Muir? Beneath his bushy brows, Tully's eyes were stone. My nephew is marked for death no matter what I do. So hang him, and be done with it. I expect Ed Muir is as weary of standing on those gallows as I am of seeing him there. Ryman Frey is a bloody fool. His mummer's show with Edmure and the gallows had only made the blackfish more obdurate. That was plain. You hold Lady Sybil Westerling and three of her children. I'll return your nephew in exchange for them. As you returned Lady Caitlin's daughters, Jamie did not allow himself to be provoked. An old woman and three children for your liege lord? That's a better bargain than you could have hoped for. Sir Brynden smiled a hard smile. You do not lack for gall, Kingslayer. Bargaining with oathbreakers is like building on quicksand, though. Cat should have known better than to trust the likes of you. It was Tyrion she trusted in, Jamie almost said. The imp deceived her, too. The promises I made to Lady Caitlin were wrong for me at sword point. And the oath you swore to Ares. He felt his phantom fingers twitching. Ares is no part of this. Will you exchange the Westerlings for Edmure? No. My king entrusted his queen to my keeping, and I swore to keep her safe. I will not hand her over to a fray noose. The girl has been pardoned. No harm will come to her. You have my word on that. Your word of honor? Sir Brynden raised an eyebrow. <laughs> Do you even know what honor is? A horse? I will swear any oath that you require. Oh, spare me, Kingslayer. I want to. Strike your banners and open your gates, and I'll grant your men their lives. Those who wish to remain at Riveron in service to Lord Emmon may do so. The rest shall be free to go where they will, though I will require them to surrender their arms and armor. I wonder how far... 
will they get unarmed before outlaws set upon them? They dare not allow them to join Lord Berwick. We both know that. And what of me? Will I be paraded through King's Landing to die like Eddard Stark? I will permit you to take the black. Ned Stark's bastard is the Lord Commander on the wall. The blackfish narrowed his eyes. Did your father arrange for that as well? Caitlin never trusted the boy, as I recall. No more than she ever trusted Theon Greyjoy. It was shame she was right about them both. <laughs> oh, no, sir, I think not. I'll die warm, if you please, with a sword in my hand running red with lion blood. Tully blood runs just as red, Jamie reminded him. If you will not yield the castle, I must storm it. Hundreds will die. Hundreds of mine, thousands of yours. Your garrison will perish to a man. I know that song. You sing it to the tune of the reigns of Castamere. My men would sooner die upon their feet fighting than on their knees beneath a headsman's axe. This is not going well. This defiance serves no purpose, sir. The war is done, and your young wolf is dead, murdered in breach of all the sacred laws of hospitality. Praise work, not mine. Call it what you will. It stinks of Tywin Lannister. Jamie could not deny that. My father is dead as well. May the father judge him justly. Now, there's an awful prospect. I would have slain Rob Stark in the Whispering Wood if I could have reached him. Some fools got in the way. Does it matter how the boy perished? He is no less dead, and his kingdom died when he did. You must be blind as well as maimed, sir. Lift your eyes, and you will see that the dire wolf still flies above our walls. I've seen him. He looks lonely. Harrenhal has fallen. Seaguard and Maidenpool. The Brackens have bent the knee, and they've got Titus Blackwood penned up in Raven Tree. Piper, Vance, Mouton, all your bannermen have yielded. Only River Run remains. We have twenty times your numbers. Twenty times the men require twenty times the food. How well are you provisioned, my lord? Oh, well enough to sit here till the end of days, if need be, whilst you starve inside your walls. He told the lie as boldly as he could, and hoped his face did not betray him. The blackfish was not deceived. The end of your days, perhaps. Our own supplies are ample, though I fear we did not leave much in the fields for visitors. We can bring food down from the twins, said Jamie, or over the hills from the west, if it comes to that. If you say so, far be it from me to question the word of such an honorable knight. The scorn in his voice made Jamie bristle. There is a quicker way to decide the matter. A single combat. My champion against yours. I was wondering when you would get to that. Sir Brynden laughed. Who will it be? Strongbor? Adam Marbrandt? Black Waldefrey? He leaned forward. Why not you and me, sir? That would have been a sweet fight once, Jamie thought. Fine fodder for the singers. When Lady Caitlin freed me, she made me swear not to take arms again against the Starks or Tullys. A most convenient oath, sir. His face darkened. Are you calling me a coward? No, I'm calling you a cripple. The blackfish nodded at Jamie's golden hand. We both know you cannot fight with that. I had two hands. Would you throw your life away for pride? A voice inside him whispered. Some might say a cripple and an old man are well matched. Free me for my vow to Lady Caitlin, and I will meet you sword to sword. If I win, River Run is ours. If you slay me, we'll lift the siege. Sir Brynden laughed again. <laughs> Much as I would welcome the chance to take the golden sword away from you and cut out your black heart. Your promises are worthless. I will gain nothing from your death but the pleasure of killing you, and I will not risk my own life for that, as small a risk as that may be. It was a good thing that Jamie wore no sword, elsewise he would have ripped his blade out, and if Sir Brynden did not slay him, 
the archer on the walls most surely would. Are there any terms you will accept? He demanded of the blackfish. From you? Sir Brendan shrugged. No. Why did you even come to treat with me? A siege is deadly dull. I wanted to see this stump of yours and hear whatever excuses you cared to offer up for your latest enormities. They were feebler than I hoped. You always disappoint, Kingslayer. The blackfish wheeled his mare and trotted back toward Riveron. The portcullis descended with a rush, its iron spikes biting deep into the muddy ground. Jamie turned Honor's head about for the long ride back to the Lannister siege lines. He could feel the eyes on him, the tully men upon their battlements, the frays across the river. If they are not blind, they'll all know he threw my offer in my teeth. He would need to storm the castle. Well, that's one more broken vow to the Kingslayer. Just more shit in the bucket.